full of fucking and screaming and shitting and eating and masturbating in the afternoon. I'm an artist, but I'm also an animal. The piece is a semi-autobiographical tale of my experience trying to make a living in the performing arts. It started with frustration, uh, a lot of fi financial anxiety, and feeling like the method that I was using to make work, which was to run a nonprofit company at a pretty consistent loss. So it was a constant stress over many years, and I was getting really burnt out. So initially I thought, I have a lot of friends and colleagues in the performing arts. Why don't I start interviewing them to find out how they deal with this issue? Then I made a list of all the people I wanted to interview, and it was a list of really interesting, amazing artists, and I thought, well, I should document this process. So I actually did a number of interviews with a live audience that were also videotaped. Then I thought it would either become a film, documentary film, which is where the title comes from, a living documentary. <laughs> or it'll be like a cross between an Anna Devere Smith piece and the Tracy Ullman show or the Carol Burnett show or Lucille Ball. These characters just started to emerge. I mean, some of them are based on actual real people and are, were more calculated, like the old man at the beginning is an actual celebrated playwright that I heard speak. And I was working on this piece and it really addressed so many of the issues I was thinking about. And then the lyrics to the songs are completely my invention. The fat lady is kind of almost like a future projection of some kind of empowered version of me who doesn't have anything to prove anymore. She's the total opposite of self-consciousness. fun to play and and hopefully really enjoyable also to watch and also a little bit horrifying to watch she actually ends up telling part of my story in a very accurate way which is the decision to fold this nonprofit company it allows me to express the perspective on that story that is disgusted and horrified and the young girl character is a version of myself when I was very young and very angry and bitter and hopeless. So each one of the characters that I play, some of them fictional and some not, and sort of to varying degrees, but each one of them serves a particular purpose in this story, you know, which is different perspectives on this issue. A lot of the things that end up in my work, the, ultimately the justification is that I just want to do them. <laughs> My work is very self-serving, actually, but what I have found is that in addressing my own deepest issues, from the responses I get, that frequently ends up helping other people who relate in some way. It's so beautiful here, and it's such a joy to be here. I was actually in the river today, and I was thinking, this is sustainable, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting paid adequately, it's a joy to do, it's not burning me out. People come, they really seem to love the work, I get to interact with them, I sit around a campfire, and I'm eating these delicious meals, there's a garden with vegetables and I can make stuff out of the garden. And I thought, if I could find, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year, I just need to find like 50 other places that are kind of like <laughs>